12 days ago, I picked up a camera. I slung it in my pocket and kept it close for moments like this. This is our journey from London, England to our final destination. The Arctic Circle. Hello and welcome to France. We're actually just about to cross the border into Belgium. So we're already caning it along and getting ourselves further and further into the trip, into the depths of Europe. It is very nice to have straight open roads and not too much traffic. Although there is a lot of traffic, they all seem to abide by not being English. How is the driving feeling? Very lovely, Paris is doing well. Feeling good, feeling Crazy. groovy. And here we go, Belgium. We've, um, we've just rocked up into an air. Probably not one of the nicer ones that I've stopped out in my time. There's a lot of toilet paper and extremely overloaded bins here so yeah we're going to try and probably avoid airs for staying in over the course and duration of the next few days until we make it to our final destination in Lapland, Abisko, Sweden. We're hoping to catch some fish, we're hoping to get some catch and cooks. I'm excited. We've got a Foul Raven Classic Meet, which is a hike that we're going on um, with like-minded individuals in the north near Abisko um, and that is our project our target to reach there by then it is the 1st of August today and it starts on the 11th we'll crack on with that so we need to get some like little hikes in between <laughs> yeah, now and then back. yeah because otherwise we've just been sat in a car for five days straight <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be bent backwards ready to roll let's knock her into gear and get out of here well, we've got a little drama with let me turn the aircon off We've got a little drama with um, a slight, just Bex has got a constant pressure on the gas, um, on the accelerator, and um, there'll be the odd, just, uh, like die every now and again. Now I don't think it's fuel, I think it's probably the boost. Now there's a little bit underneath the hood that, um, you can just pull that out, it just gets stuck sometimes, so I'm uh, just gonna grab the tools out now and uh, give that a check out, make sure that's all, all good and all loosey-goosey. How are you feeling, drive? Sleepy. Right, let's check this out. That seems alright. 
So I think, um, yeah, I'm going to jump behind the wheel anyway and see if I can feel it. I don't want to say fuel. I hope it's not fuel. Um, because that would be rather annoying. We've just rocked up at a petrol station um, and we've got, I've got some Red X here, so I'm just gonna slam that in just to, um, just to curb any worries about sort of fuel contamination. So that should clean her out um, and hopefully we'll be in a good place. I felt a bit of, I think, Driving at 50, we were driving at about 50 miles an hour to try and get decent fuel consumption and all that sort of good stuff. And also, at 50 miles an hour, she sits at uh, 2,000 RPM. So, I don't want to really push her much more than that. There's no point stressing her out. Um, so, we'll just keep her moving. And I keep saying she and her and stuff like that. But I do actually just realise that this vehicle's actually called Percy, isn't it? Yeah, it's a he. It's, it's a he. Get it right, Chip. I'm going to call her. I'm going to call her Betsy. This is my Betsy. When I'm driving, she's called Betsy. I night was just we were so tired man we just rocked up to that spot that we were at and we just crashed out we got some like tin chili on and with like some two minute rice just smashed that with a bit of a get and then we just had to wait around for ages until it got dark so i don't really think we were in line with the rules of being camping there um because we realized that we were actually just shy of the german border it's fine to camp in germany one night only but in uh, the Netherlands they really don't like it you can get charged up to 140 uh, euros by police so yeah we um, we set up late and we left early just to uh, just to minimize annoying anyone really but yeah we're, we're pretty burnt out we're pretty tired and that's only after a day of traveling we've got like another 500 kilometers 600 kilometers to do today we'll see how we feel but we want to try and get a campsite tonight so we can as soon as we're done, we can pitch up, get the awning up, get the tent up, cook a nice meal, get Beck's bike sorted out, because there's a bit of a drama with it, so we can't have it on the rack on the rear at the minute, which will make it better, because then we can put the bike on the rack at the rear. It's just the brake pads we need to change. We can't get the wheel in properly at the minute, because of the, uh, the caliper that keeps them in. So we'll put that on the back. <laughs> We've just been to Lidl, so we're buzzing, gonna get some food, downrange now get some energy back in because you can probably tell I'm pretty depleted as is Bex and we're just sort of we're coasting at the minute and we just want to get across the border and start the enjoyment but the Netherlands have been beautiful we were cutting around through the woods last night and uh, just enjoying it and it's beautiful really beautiful so we're getting all our healthy goodness back in we bought some premier style ham some nice uh, bloomer bread got some Bits and bobs. Let's get on the road, yeah? How's it going? Hello. So, we are now in Germany. Um, and I was just saying about the unwritten rule because the traffic's come down to like pretty much a stop. So, everyone here literally just goes and the cars on the left hand side of the dual carriageway and the cars on the right hand side of the dual carriageway just go their separate ways and cause like basically a lane down the middle. Um, I was just saying to Bex, how, like, I just saw like a post on it ages ago, how it's like an unwritten rule here in Germany, how if it gets to slow moving traffic like that on a dual carriageway or a motorway, they split to each side just so like emergency services can go through, which I think is pretty cool to be honest. We should do that in the UK really, shouldn't we? Yeah, it's just... Instead of all merging together, want an ambulance to come through. Yeah, that, that's not like for It's all selfish, <laughs> and we'd rather get somewhere quicker than have whoever's Tom, Dick and Harry's dying in the back at Landy. I was going to, like, get some shots of, like, what's going on as we're driving through here, but 
I can't really because same shit different day. <laughs> yeah, it does actually. As much as we're sort of cruising through it, we're still just very much on motorways and dual carriageways cruising through. And to be honest, it just looks like Northern England, but flatter at the minute here. Um, so there's not really much to show you. It's pretty much more of the same old. So when it gets a bit more spicy, uh, we'll we'll send it. Peace. <laughs> too much we are on a campsite on this evening um, and the lighting probably isn't the best either because an amazing very dark black cloud has just rolled in and I think we're about to get hit big time by a storm you can hear the thunder Good morning all. It has been rain, rain, rain. Chatting with a friend on email this morning who lives in Germany and they've apologised for the weather we've currently got in a minute, hoping it doesn't leave a bad taste in our mouth as we pass through this fine country. But it's not, to be honest. It's been beautiful, hasn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. I like the forest here. Yeah, it's been wet, but we're in the forest. And uh, the rain's just adding to it, really. We're trying to keep dry as well as possible under the awning. But yeah, it's going good. We're hoping to punch out today and head into Denmark. Uh, it's actually noon now. We've had a bit of a slow, lazy morning, just been chilling. I've not done much filming because of the, the rain's actually been, you can hear it on top of the, uh, the awning, so it's been quite hard to, to get much filming done. But we're gonna have a hearty breakfast now, slash lunch brunch, get some showers, repack, reassess, and get on the road. Who's in? What's the scores on the doors, Bex? Feeling good? I'm feeling amazing, especially after this. chilled morning and now we're heading off today today we're making it to sweden oh they've still got netto <laughs> oh for god's sake Jay! no the food Stop off at Danish McDonald's. Let's see what it's saying. Danish cheeseburgers. Tastes from McDonald's. Tastes exactly the same as English cheeseburgers. Really? Oh. No difference. Mm. 
when I went to the Philippines, they tasted well different. In France, they taste quite different. In uh, Switzerland, I feel like they taste different there as well. But anyway, that's enough about McDonald's kind of cereal. <laughs> McDonald's kind of cereal stuff for today. We've just been over some cool bridge, that was cool. And then um, we're heading over the main bridge soon, which I'm excited to get over because apparently it's stunning. And it sounds it and it looks it. So let's get there. I'm going to finish this cheeseburger. Old, old on the bridge, baby. We're on the bridge. We're cruising over. By the time we get off this, we're in Sweden. messed up earlier that wasn't right that wasn't the right bridge that was a bridge that led us on to a small island off Denmark but then well that was part of Denmark and now now we're heading across the bridge into Sweden <laughs> day of driving man we're both pretty worn out we're both pretty tired but this place oh we are finally in Sweden and this is our first night's park up it's stunning this this is Sweden <laughs> here and the thing is the scenery isn't even the best bits it's just because it's just it's so set up out here for this thing for overlanding for going out for camping in the woods they want you to do it they want you to get out in nature straight away a bench over here what's this little cabin you ask well let me tell you that is a toilet not just a toilet but a disabled toilet access to everyone out here man and that is in a lot better state than many, 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 many UK toilets, facilities. Considering as well, it's in the middle of the woods. Not to mention, there's a bin. There is literally a bin here. Stop everyone throwing their rubbish around. One of my favorite things though, is the fact that a short walk from the landy just there is this beast. Look at that. Come down, sit around in, good old fire with your friends, family, whatever. And not only is it just a fireplace, you've got the prep area around it that you can get your barbecue on, light your fire in the middle, and get your sausages on the barbie. What a beautiful place. This is our first night. I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what the rest of it's gonna look like, but if this is day one, I don't know what it's gonna look like when we get to Lapland. I'm buzzing, I'm absolutely buzzing.
dude, I've been bit so much, man, already. And I can see them now, they're flying around me and my camera. The best night's sleep of the trip so far. It was great, we had all the fly mesh open. Just the wind blowing through, you could smell the birch burning in the local homesteads, just wafting through the camp, and it was amazing. The setup looks amazing. We've got breakfast on now, and cooking up a storm of French toast, or as I like to call it, eggy bread. How to tell your girlfriend is a mountain woman. Eats her brekkie with a Swiss army knife. <laughs> Becky's now driving away from me because she thinks she's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And she's going to keep doing it until I have to just jump on the rear ladder and hope for the best all the way to Lapland. You're funny, aren't you? Absolutely hilarious sat there eating your apple. Nutella and apple. Let's have a go on that. Cool, oh, blimey. Oh, <laughs> deal. Mmm, that's nice. Away, that's a vibe. You know what that's giving me? Halloween vibes. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be Halloween by the time we get home. Ten days before. <laughs> We've come to Ica or Ica. Um, this one. We got told by a friend just before we came here that this is probably the cheapest place to shop. So, um, yeah, we're going to fill the fridge. Wish us luck. We don't really know what we're searching for. But hopefully there's some cool ass delicacies that are local to this place in here. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of fish. That'd be nice. Lovely. Fish and chip. Ooh, we'll have chip. Uh... <gasps> oh my god, I nearly had to down that. That would have been a shotgun session. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get the cages in anymore. Now, nah, Bex, we've overbought. We can't even get the cages in. We're going to have to take some of the beers out. Operation success, was it not? Thanks for the chicken sandwich. Oh, we've got a shop for the few days. We've got a fresh chicken, nice hot one. Just strip that quick time on the back of the Land Rover. You don't want to see that. It wasn't. It was messy. It wasn't nice, was it? Yeah, right on the bumper. Right on the bumper, stripping chickens. And now we are hitting the road. Three hours and 32 minutes north of here. 363 kilometers. And then we'll be at a beautiful Lakeland park up. And it's sunny. And it is sunny. It's a beautiful day. Yet another one. The same day that we had yesterday, but in the future. <laughs> Gonna be a mad old thunderstorm. They're striking pretty close as well. I am slightly concerned that we're in a big metal roof tent. It's starting to come down now. This is our second night here. I've not done any filming today, but we've just been chilling out, trying to recoup. Got a fire going down there. But I think we'll get a head up now. Get ourselves into the roof tent and try and uh, try and evade this. <laughs> We're in for a long old night.
I was just literally thinking, I was flying that then, thinking about it and like the way it took off and stuff. I was like, I love this drone, it's awesome. Now it's gone. At the bottom of the lake. Flying. I didn't realise it was on sport mode, I thought I was still on cinematic, so I didn't realise that the, because uh, the detection, front and back, was off. I'd just been flying it through the trees and it wouldn't let me go certain directions, so I thought it won't let me go low into the water. Went straight down into the water. As you can see, it bounced to start off with, and I thought, oh my god, no. At least I'm going to be able to dry it out. And then just before it got to shore, it literally just must have got into the electrics and all the power died, and it literally poof, off the water. Saw it, and I was like, no way. And it kept going, I was like, no way. And then literally about three meters before us, it just went poof, and just died and just landed straight in the water, man. been searching for my drone for about half an hour in this bug infested swamp. I give up. The drone is lost. <laughs> That's that. Peace. On the plus side, it's relatively warm. The water wasn't too cold and I dried out with the wind. So now I'm re-garmented. Sat in this nice little hut which isn't as nice now because I'll always remember it as the hut where I lost my freaking drone <laughs> Stockholm, I was like, yeah, all right. Now look down at the sat now. I've been gone an hour. <laughs> oh man, that was a hardcore sleep. I haven't slept while you've been driving yet, have I? No, you haven't trusted me enough. <laughs> I said it Bex, it must be a inline five fluctuating under the bonnet that makes me sleep like a baby. I didn't sing you off to sleep, twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> Little lullabies. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let my brain wake up. getting off on the road. We had a truck parked next to us all night last night who had his uh, cooling um, like GUE generator engine on to keep all the produce cold in the back. GUE, if you know, you know. Challenger 2, man, battle tank, mate. How you getting on, girl outdoors? Cush the yellow bush, We've got seven and a half hours on the road today. And I think we're actually in Lapland, aren't we, by the time we get there today? Yeah. I think we are. So today, we hit and we bounce into Lap of the land. Well, they're on full blast, ready for takeoff. <laughs> Says it, Captain. We got ourselves some little pastries that we grabbed yesterday. We completely forgot about them, and we just got in here, realised they were there, and both screamed like little girls, didn't we? Yeah. That was amazing. Magic. And a little bookshe coffee as well. We're heading to McDonald's en route because we need to absolutely binge their Wi-Fi to upload videos a piece, and then we're in a good place. It's a, quite a windy one today, isn't it? It's a bit wet and windy. Also trying to head tonight to this super nice uh, camp spot, which is like an old fishing campsite sort of thing, where it's got like rustic old looking log cabins. So we're hoping to make it to there, but that's another four hours away. But we're fueled up and we're good to go.
woke up at about 6.30 with the sun just creeping up over there. Oh my God. Dude, mate, <laughs> it was beautiful. My girlfriend's walking around in a bra and pants somewhere over there on the beach, trying to get like standard Instagrammy girl shots. Huh? Don't matter. Love you, yeah. <laughs> In a bit. <laughs> the reality is, mate, that's overlanding. That's what that is right there. Everything looks a mess. I literally don't think there's any other way to do it when there's two of you living in such a small vehicle, man. It's carnage. You know what? So far, though, the uh, the awning, the tent, we haven't used the shower curtain yet, which has been grot bags. We've had like one shower in the space of the seven days we've been on the road. It's not been a clean old sketch, but you know what? Grinding through. The awning has seen some absolutely catastrophic rain and thunderstorms, as, as well as the tent has. I've noticed a bit of uh, condensation in the tent at times, but it's been great, man. It's been good. I'm not, I'm not adding new dramas with it. The awning collects a bit of water, but I mean, beggars can't be choosers, dude. It works well, um, and it only gets a certain amount of water in it, which ain't that heavy. It's like seven liters in each parallel of it, if that makes sense and then it all just sort of drips out after that, so you don't get too much weight on it. I suppose that's a good like 30 kilos though across the actual awning of weight on it, but it seems to hold it fine and we've been in probably one of the worst storms of my entire life and it survived, so can't complain really, mate. site for the night and it looks absolutely beautiful it doesn't even feel like a campsite to be honest look we're just here in the woods there's this beautiful limestone track that heads up over these rocks up there into the wilderness and we're going to do the full setup on the vehicle we're going to get the tent part we're going to put the awning out and we are going to chuck the shower curtain up as well because we're going to have a shower i think there is a shower down there but because we've got water on tap we're going to boil some water up and maybe have a shower in there I was your first love, and you were my first one. Cheers to all the memories, the venom and the remedies, yeah. Promise I won't forget, yeah. Maybe it's something in the water, yeah. or maybe we just hit the end of the road. Guy cooking up a barbecue storm. Right, you're trying the salmon, rainbow salmon, do you say? I think it's rainbow salmon. I thought it was rainbow trout. Well, yeah, it is. You said rainbow salmon. So I guess it's that um, from the local lake right there, just been caught. So. Well, that washing was still out overnight. And uh, I was like, 
Hello. The um, the last 48 hours has been pretty stressful. I've not done any filming or anything like that. And yeah, can you see why it's been stressful? <laughs> just before we left the campsite yesterday, Bex did a check on the vehicle, looked underneath, and I thought it was just rusty water that was cutting about. But upon taking a further look, realized that it was actually coolant. The coolant tank here leads down to a pipe. You've got the return pipe, but the pipe that heads out, it goes over the top of the steering column, uh, a bar that twist is connected to your steering wheel and it comes through your bulkhead and connects to your wheel set and blah de blah de blah turns your wheels but that rotates like this well for some reason i don't know if it's land rover's fault or someone that's refitted this uh, return pipe slash sender pipe in the previous days that someone's owned this vehicle but it was sat on that so a moving piece of metal that's doing this constantly every time you steer uh, was sat on one of the basically the cool one of the coolant hoses for the vehicle so yeah that eventually wore through and it was pissing everywhere and it was in an extremely carnage position it was right on a bend that it split and it was right down in the bay underneath there i stripped out the coolant tank here and then it was basically down here you can see a cable tie now that i put there which actually meant that this pipe this one this was the split down here uh, just a bit lower than that that's now pulled up off the shaft here which you can see is quite shiny down there and that's where it was rubbing on the uh, on the steering column so yeah that's sorted now basically uh, and we're in a good place um, I basically just went into <laughs> class Olsen behind us it was about a three mile drive from the campsite to get here so jumped on that grabbed some like sort of expanding tape uh, tape uh, that goes around like hose pipes and stuff and it's for high temperatures so you basically just wrap it round and then I've just cable tied each end and tried to get in on it as good as possible it was leaking still this morning but I've re-cable tied it now and fingers crossed it's good to go so now we're going to be driving to the Lofton Islands we've been driving for probably three hours and um, we're still dry there's no drips underneath that's all dried out now um, I've checked down underneath in the bay, I've felt underneath the pipe where it was split and we're good to go. The coolant level is at the same place. So considering that was all pissed out of the floor yesterday and was completely empty, I'm considering it a good repair. I mean, I wouldn't say a good repair, but it's a repair that works um, and I'm hoping that it's going to get us home. And if it doesn't, at least we know that we can do that again. Uh, to fix the problem and get us out of dodge that's the thing with a vehicle like this it's not like bow it's not like the van where something happens there's an electrical problem something like that this thing is mechanical yes you can fix it you can change parts you can fix parts you can make shit work which is great and that's why we're here in a discovery in the arctic in the arctic circle we're here we've made it and the landscape finally has truly become what we expected of the arctic circle hasn't it Yes, absolutely beautiful. It's divine, and I want to just slap you all in the face with it right now, so I'm going to shut up, and let's just show you what we're driving through.
after 2,000 miles of driving, repair works on the landy, crossing seas, many a sunset, a few sunrise, some beautiful park ups. Finally, after 12 days, we're in the Arctic Circle. Is it what I expected it to be? Is it, is it what you expected it to be, Bex? I don't know if I was really expecting anything. Yeah, I don't really know what I was expecting, to be honest. Just wanted to enjoy it. You've seen what Norway looks like. That's where we now are. We're in Norway. We crossed the border about two hours ago. And you've seen some of the footage and B-roll before this scene here. That has been bouncing around on the screen. But where we are, behind us, these beautiful mountains tower around us on this stunning sea lock here. We've just been for a swim down there about half an hour ago and we're cooking dinner as we speak. So thank you, thank you so much for joining us on this adventure. And to the next one, to the next video, to what is to come. The Lofton Islands soon, probably one of the most beautiful places in the world that we're literally four hours away from that we'll be adventuring up to there. And also coming next is our section hike on the Kungsleden, which is the King's Trail, one of the biggest, most beautiful hikes in Sweden. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so very much. And thank you to all the previous and forbearing ones that you might indeed watch. Thank you. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell notification because there's some gnarly stuff coming. We'll be back to the UK in the next six to seven weeks and uh, we will be yeah, back in the van, back bouncing around, doing stuff there, and there's some mad stuff already planned for when we get back to the UK as well. So, join us for the rest of Sweden, join us for the rest of Norway, join us for the Lofoten Islands, and uh, I will see you next Tuesday for more on this. Peace.